After the success of Kirby's Return to Dreamland and the various 3DS games throughout, Kirby became a way more prominent series for Nintendo. As there were so many great games in the series that was released on the handheld device, especially with titles like Kirby's Triple Deluxe and Kirby's Planet Robobot. I already made a video on Triple Deluxe not too long ago, but as for Planet Robobot, well, after the heck of a mess I had with 3DS Emulator, I'm going to be waiting on Planet Robobot, but I'll go back to it once I have a much more proper capture device for the 3DS. So with that, we're going to be heading to the fourth game in this, uh, Tetralogy, that people like to call these games. So after Planet Robobot released in 2016, the Nintendo Switch was releasing the following year, and with that, a brand new mainline Kirby game was announced during that E3. Which is honestly something very new for Kirby, because if you look at Kirby's lineup throughout the years, you can see that Nintendo released Kirby games at the near end of their home console life. So it was the Nintendo Switch that broke this trend for Kirby. And based on the trailer from the E3 showcase, it seemed to be focused on a lot more on multiplayer base, as you have three helpers, which reminds me a lot of Kirby Superstar. But another interesting thing is that you can combine certain elements similar to Kirby 64 into a brand new one like a fiery sword. Kirby Star Allies was the title for this game and it released in early 2018 for the Nintendo Switch and received pretty solid reviews by critics but the fan reception was a bit more on the mixed side. Basically making this the most divisive Kirby game in the series where some people really like it while some people can't stand this game. Not helping the fact that this is one of the various Nintendo games that suffer the whole free updates model, but I'll just get this out of the way real quick. I didn't find the free updates what they did with this game as egregious as other games, so I'm not going to be talking about the free updates at all in this video, I just want to say that I acknowledge the free updates. I remember picking this game up during the summer of 2018, but it's been a while since I played this game, especially since the year has gone by, and we've gotten more Kirby games for the Nintendo Switch. So I didn't really have that much of an incentive to replay Star Allies, especially with Return to Dreamland Deluxe and Forgotten Land being on the same console. So I'm very curious on how well this game holds up after... six years, holy shit. But with everything on the way, let's get started. So when the game starts, we are shown a mysterious fortress in space that's being run by this strange hooded figure, where he launches this crystal heart into space that shatters across Dreamland, with one of them landing near King Dedede, who seems to be reacting weirdly towards it. Meanwhile, Kirby is just sleeping underneath this tree when he absorbs a heart that lands near him. It wakes him up just in time to see a bunch of Wildies carrying food towards Castle Dedede. Kirby then assumes that King Dedede is trying to steal all the food again, which is where he heads off to. He was able to take him down in no time guarantee, but this was only the beginning as these dark crystal hearts keep appearing and flying away. Assuming that there is a bigger threat, Kirby then heads off going after these hearts and see where they come from. The story of this game is very simple for a Kirby game, as it's mostly Kirby going on a quest to figure out the source of these hearts, which turns out to be the Jamba hearts, albeit fragments of them. And the more you progress through the game, the more of the bigger picture you have with the antagonist's plan, who is named Highness, and along the way you'll also be introduced to the three mage sisters who are based on a central element and the generals of Highness. And just like the other modern Kirby characters, their backstories are surprisingly dark on how they were able to get their powers, as the abilities they were able to get were based on how they were almost killed by. Like how Francisca was almost killed by a snowstorm, and how Flame Burge was almost killed in a fire. But the final mage, Zane Party Zane, is probably the darkest out of the three mages, as during her dying breath, she tries to climb a tower during a thunderstorm after losing everything. And because of this, Kirby fans had speculated that she tried to, um, off herself. Kirby, your story elements in the newer games leave me pondering like no other Nintendo game has done. Not even games like Super Paper Mario or freaking Zelda Majora's Mask. But anyway, these three girls would have died if it wasn't for their master, Highness, as he saved their lives, and so he made them his generals. And they are also the obstacles in Kirby's way. So let's go on to the game itself, because I feel like we'll be here all day if we keep talking about the lore in Kirby games. So for the gameplay, it's Kirby. You run, hover, inhale, and copy enemy abilities and such. There's nothing really to mention about the gameplay since it's the fourth game in the Return to Dreamlands formula. But there are a few new abilities introduced in Star Allies. The first one we have here is Artist Kirby, 
With this, Kirby can use various things like paint, brushes, and such to attack enemies with. Now, there was a copy ability in Superstar called Paint, but that was more so a screen nuke and not an actual copy ability. And speaking of screen nukes, Festival. <laughs> It's pretty cute. And speaking of which, Kirby goes full on Spider-Man as he uses special spider webs as an attack. As he does various things like trapping them or using the webs as a shield. I think my favorite new ability in this game is probably Staff as it's a really good and effective long range weapon and it's very fun to use. And lastly, although this isn't really a new copy ability per se, is Clean. As this one originally appeared in Jayman 3, but in Star Allies it was fully reimagined as he uses various elements from Dreamland 3 in the attacks, and even having cameos of the characters that were introduced in the game as well. Making this not only a great fan service ability, but just a great ability in general. An overall pretty solid lineup when it comes to new abilities. But they really go out to their fullest once the allies comes into play. So in Kirby Star Allies, it heavily focuses on a forming a team, hence the title. You can ally yourself with three different characters with this new friend heart Kirby can use. Which gives this game a lot of great benefits, but also some big detriments as well. But first, for the positive. So similar to game like Kirby 64 but not really as compact, you can combine certain abilities into one. I'd say not as compact because it's mostly focusing on like physical abilities like swords, hammers, or even the whip. You use these weapons and combine them with the more elemental copy abilities like fire, ice, water, and wind. And this does lead to inching puzzles with the combinations. Like for example, you use a fire sword to cut the fuse of a bomb and light it up at the same time. That way it can blow up a secret passage for you to get some goodies. And while this is really cool, this leads to the biggest problem of Star Allies that made people not really like it too much. It's difficulty. Since this game is mostly focused on the multiplayer aspect with four characters at once, this leads to the level design to be very basic, and the puzzles themselves, besides the elemental stuff, is also on the basic side. Like one form, for example, you're divided into two separate groups where you have to play hot potato as you flip switches. However, they're not all just very simple, because there are some that are a bit more interesting. There's one section where you form a small little donut as you roll down this area trying to defeat all the enemies and try to go over the obstacle course. There's this one section where you're trying to lure these key enemies to the right gig by forming a bridge. As you need to take out certain enemies so you can get the guy into the keyhole, otherwise he'll just get blocked off. There's also Friendstar where you can do the small little sky shooter area that actually has different weapon depending on which ability you have. And lastly, there's these train sections you can do that's similar to the donut one, but way faster. I feel like these areas are the best use for the allies, besides trying to make things a lot easier for you. Especially during the bridge areas where you're trying to get that special collectible, for example. But even then, the main collectibles in these games are surprisingly toned down compared to previous games, where there's only one primary collectible instead of three. As throughout the game, you'll find yourself having these special puzzle pieces to fill out this cool little artwork. There's also these giant switches you can find hidden throughout certain levels. These are to unlock even more stages, and also the main thing for Star Allies calls Dream Friends. And what this is, is that you enter this small little fountain area, grab the wand, and you can summon various Kirby characters throughout the series. Essentially meaning that we have a lot of familiar faces that probably haven't had an appearance in a really long time. Such as Rick Kine and Koo from Kirby's Dream Land 2, Gooey from Dreamland 3, we have Adeline and Ribbon from Kirby 64, and even DeRoge makes an appearance. There's also Kirby's best friend with Marks, looking surprisingly much more cutesy than his original appearance. They've included my favorite character in the game, Bandana Wallaby. He's my favorite because he's a great test to see who actually played the newer Kirby games and who hasn't. I decided for my playthrough to use the Dream Friends as the primary allies, and honestly these guys make the game a bit more fun, albeit a bit broken sometimes because how some of the characters can be very overpowered. Especially with some of the bosses in this game. Now I've gotta say, the bosses were probably the more challenging aspects of Kirby Star Allies because these were clearly made for four characters in mind, and because of this some of the bosses can do a bit more over the top attacks than usual. 
Life with King Deity, who can turn into the ginormous buff deity and pretty much swing around the area like King Kong. But honestly, if you want to play this game, focus on tagging the Dream Friends because they are great. Which leads me to probably the best aspect of Star Allies, which is that this game slowly went from being just a simple multiplayer Kirby game into a massive fan service game that celebrates a series' history, and I'm not just talking about stuff like, Hey look! It's a reference! From the game I like. Because they really put in the effort having a lot of great callbacks to previous games, like how the opening cutscene is being a nod on various stories, like how there's an evil force controlling people like King Deity. And not just that, but also Deity stealing food was the thing they used to do before turning good in later games. Although even then, if it's not an evil force, he still gets hypnotized in some way so they can have a King Deity boss fight. During the final world map in the game, you are flying across the cosmos, exploring different planets for each level, and you can choose them in any order you want, which reminds me a lot of Milky Way Witches from Superstar. And even with the levels themselves, throughout you also find these cute little portraits that are based on artwork from older games as well. And I think one of the coolest ones is that during a secret level at the near end, you find yourself literally going into a Game Boy. As you literally go through a recreation of Kirby's first ever level in the original Game Boy title. And things off with this cool little thing that they did with the controller. Keep in mind, these things don't have a speaker. This is literally the HD Rumble doing the theme song. Like, <laughs> that is really freaking cool. And this doesn't even include the extra content as well, as you finish the game, you have a good amount of post-game stuff as well. The sub-games return, with the first one being race to see you can chop off the much wood as you can, while the second one is basically Megaton Punch, where you need to shoot a meteor in the sky. But the main side mode of this game has to be Guest Star Mode, which allows you to play as any helper in the game, as well as the Dream Friends, which allows you to speed run through all the levels similar to Meta Nightmare Mode. And this is probably the best mode in the game in general because it's just very fast paced and really fun to speed run through through the entire game as they try to boost up your stats so you go even faster or even more powerful and you can get that satisfying score. But this is where the fan surface really ferments with the Dream Friends because not only the artwork is a recreation from the game they originate from, but also their levels are literally remix versions of the original games like GUI for example with level 1 being exactly from Dreamland 3. Which is a really cool attention of detail. It really shows that Hal really cares about the Kirby series. And I also like this. So at the near end, you get a secret boss fight with Galactonite. But then suddenly, a freaking butterfly appears and absorbs Galactonite and transforms into Morphal Knight. Not only being a cool callback to the original concept art of what Midnight used to look like, but also the fact that Kirby fans are now afraid of butterflies because of this game. So if you're wondering why Kirby fans are afraid of butterflies, this is why. Kirby has been betrayed multiple times, that's why Kirby fans have trust issues when it comes to new characters. And as for the final extra mode, this is included with the third and final DLC pack, which is Heroes in Another Dimension, which is a small gauntlet area trying to collect these special hearts. Which is honestly really fun to go through, especially with those damn collectibles which are really devilishly hidden. And the environments themselves are honestly really breathtaking, it honestly looks exactly like the dimensional areas in Kirby's Return to Dream Man, which is always nice. Which honestly leads me to the graphics of this game, because for an early Nintendo Switch channel, this game looks freaking amazing for the system. Kirby games are known to having really good graphics for a system, and this game is no exception. I honestly remember years ago when the demo of this game first released, I was just mesmerized by that beautiful sunset. And I was just thinking, damn, they really fit all this into this small little console. I honestly like how it's very realistic, but at the same time, it still looks like the Kirby game. And I don't really talk about UIs or something, but I've gotta say, Kirby Star Allies has some of the coolest looking UI menus I've seen in the game. I think my only big criticism with the game's presentation is that it runs at 30fps. Now I don't really mind about frame rates in video games, I'm fine with the 30fps gameplay style, but the thing is, is that Kirby Star Allies is a bit weird with it. As the gameplay itself is 30fps, but the menus, the pause screen, and even the end sequence where you're trying to get a bunch of more goodies, are at 60 FPS, so it kind of sticks out a bit. Especially since Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is on the Nintendo Switch as well, and that is a full-on remake. But you do eventually get used to it, so I don't really consider it as big of a problem, it just feels a bit distracting in the early parts of the game. And as for the music too, it's honestly really good as well. 
And once again, this is a part that Kirby always does greatly with, so I have nothing else to say. Other than that, the Limo tape for this game is surprisingly really catchy. I honestly had it stuck in my head for a few days. And with that, I think it's finally appropriate to talk about the endgame stuff. I've always loved saying these for last because these things can be very interesting at times, and Kirby Star Allies is no exception. So after you go throughout the various planets of the game, you'll find yourself in the mysterious fortress of the Jambastians. After doing a small platforming challenge, you find yourselves in the room called the Divine Terminus. This is where you find yourself with Zane Party Zane, the final mage sister, and after defeating her, you're confronted with Highness himself. He does a little bit of a monologue in a surprisingly unhinged way, and now it's time for the final battle. The first phase is seemingly very easy as he does very simple attacks, but then suddenly... So after the first phase, he goes down the freaking deep end as he goes all insane, summoning the mage sisters into small statues that he uses as weapons themselves. He literally uses one of the mages as a batting club! Also, he can regain the Jumba heart so he can restore his master. And once he realizes that he can't just defeat Kirby, he then sacrifices the mage and himself to restore the heart. And because of this, the Jumba Heart is complete, and his master is finally reincarnated into Void Termina. And so, with everything out of the way, Kirby then summons the Star Ally Sparkler, which is a small little gumshit that he uses to attack the final boss. And what's even cooler is that the final boss takes place in a fully 3D area. Four years before Kirby went on to his first ever 3D entry. And my god, this final boss is a spectacle showcase as he uses such a fascinating amount of attacks at you. Giving this a much more grander scale than any other Kirby final boss has done before. And the craziest part too is that this giant beast is only the shell of the final boss. As after you defeat this giant beast, you enter inside of him to awaken this small creature called Void Termina. And let me tell ya, out of any single Kirby character, this one right here has the most questions about him. As a lot of small details and such, it signifies that this thing and Kirby are related in some way. I recommend watching this video about the lore of Kirby by Designing 4, as he does a really good job telling the story and lore about the game. And lastly, I like how Void Termina is clearly a somewhat reincarnation of Dark Matter. I mean, come on, it is literally Dark Matter right here. After you chase Void out of his shell, he then tries to do one final attack, but then Kirby, with the power of his friends, attack him for one final blow. And with this, Void has been defeated, and Kirby just barely escaped with his life. And that concludes Kirby's Star Allies in our role. It was honestly a pretty solid time. Now granted, even though I do think this is a pretty good game, I do feel like this is probably one of the weaker Kirby games, especially during the modern era. But that's not to say there's not a lot to appreciate to this game, because I really do love the fanfare this game does for the Kirby series. And this game does have fun replayability, especially with guest star mode, or if you want to do the true arena. As if you complete this in the highest difficulty, you'll unlock a special skin for Kirby that is pretty much a big callback to his original Dream Man appearance. But as for my recommendation, despite me liking this game, I really say wait for a price shop for this game. As I feel like your money is better spent on Kirby and the Forgotten Land, as it's a much more interesting and engaging platformer in general. And if you want a more traditional 2D Kirby game, then I recommend trying to get Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe instead, as I feel like the difficulty curve in that game is way better than Star Allies. As I feel like this game would mostly appeal to die-hard Kirby fans rather than the casual audience. As even though I really do love the callbacks that Star Allies does, from an outsider's perspective, these callbacks and easter eggs wouldn't really have the same impact if you're really a fan of Kirby. But even then, it's still a Kirby game, so you will still have somewhat of a good enjoyment of it. Especially with multiplayer, as those things are usually a blast to go through. But whatever Kirby does next on Nintendo Switch, or probably the next-gen console, I cannot wait and see. But that'll do for today, so thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye bye <laughs>